I should adhere uh, to the schedule uh, of the line. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of uh, cargoes, many uh, items are carried general cargo in the containers. Mm -hmm. In the containers, you can carry uh, food uh, stuff, even reefers. You have a lot of uh, cargo uh, moved, and accordingly, you have different uh, container types. Can you remember the container types we were talking about? Normal container, general cargo, dry container, and then we mentioned the uh, open top. Yes, yes. We mentioned the reefers. High cube. High cube. Reefers. Reefers. Uh, and also in the line now you have some kind of tariff. Yeah, you have a rate. They will tell you a rate. A rate is there, but uh, when you are loading the general cargo, every time you have to uh, negotiate. Every time you have to negotiate the freight rate with ship owner, and uh, if you are hiring a vessel or chartering a vessel, uh, the freight rate is always uh, changing. Uh, what is uh, the rule which govern the market. Any market, uh, for example, like shipping, what is the rule which govern the free trade? And this, uh, this question, you know, uh, this rule is applied to many markets, not only to the shipping market. Uh, what, what is the reason that the freight is going up and down? Demand, demand and supply. Ah, great, great. This is a, we call it, you know, rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. This is very well known rule. Demand and supply. If there are too much uh, um, uh, ships and uh, vessels are in the market, uh, available in the market to carry general cargo or uh, chemicals or oil, if uh, you have a lot of ships available in the market, you will find that the freight is very low. If the demand is high and uh, vessels are, uh, are not available, um, the there is no, uh, they call it tonnage, you know, in the market of the general cargo, they call it tonnage. When they say tonnage is there, too much tonnage, which means too much ships are available. If the tonnage is uh, exceeding the demand, the freight will go uh, down. If uh, we have a lot of cargo uh, which are needed to be uh, uh, shipped and moved by ships, naturally, the number of the ships available will be less and then the freight will go high. <clears throat> uh, this uh, this, uh, as you remember, we mentioned before um, that the liner shipping is going in fixed routes. You can see routes like Chennai, Kuchin, Colombo, Hong Kong, uh, they are made in China and then come back. Ship routes and uh, many routes, a route could, could be a long route from China, for example, to, China, to India. Uh, a route could be a small route, it depends. It depends on the surface. But uh, by all means, they have a regular uh, line to move and to adhere to a regular schedule. Uh, in the tram, it is not uh, the same story here in, um, supply and demand. Uh, you have cargo, and then you start looking for a ship. So uh, the market is up and down, up and down. A um, lot of uh, economic uh, conditions uh, controlling this market. You know, for example, uh, take um, the tanker market. What is the tanker market? Uh, brother, can you hear me or uh, my voice is clear? It is breaking sometimes. Oh, I see, I see, I see. 
So uh, I was asking uh, my, my dear, um, uh, what is the tanker market? What what is um, uh, the factors which control a market like the tanker market, for example? Tanker market means uh, you mean to say uh, the supply of uh, this one or the monopoly system? Okay, now uh, they uh, usually uh, the oil price uh, has two um, indicators. I'm not sure if you are uh, aware of these two indicators. They called uh, Brent oil price and Texas oil price. Have you heard these two names before? Can you, can you once again can you can you repeat the names because the voice is breaking oh um, the oil price uh, normally is uh, identified by two indexes the print the uh, print uh, oil price and texas or they call it west texas oil price Ah, yes, yes, I heard, WT, WT. Yeah, you see, they have, um, one moment, one moment. Crude oil and WT oil. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I was, I'm just, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just checking the my internet connection. I think it's better now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so, Brent crude and WT crude. Yes, Brent crude and uh, West Texas crude. Uh, this is the price of the yeah, oil. WT crude, yes. Yeah, the price of the oil is going up and down uh, according to the production. If they have a lot of production, and uh, the market is demanding more and more oil, the price will go on. Uh, accordingly, the price of the tanker, the freight rate will go on, you know. Uh, if uh, there are a lot of production and there is no demand for oil, you will see that the print price and West Texas will go down. These days, they are uh, around 50 US dollars. Uh, if you go back two months ago, it was like uh, 20, 25. So this market, you know, uh, of, of, of oil, for example, yes. is, is controlling the tanker, the tanker market. As long as there is a high demand, you will find that the tanker uh, higher uh, is going uh, up. Uh, and uh, the freight... Why is it breaking? Now it's not coming. Oh, I see. Hello? Hello, uh, can you hear my voice now? Stop, there is no voice of you. No voice, okay, one moment. Speaking, doctor. One moment, one moment. I will try to check my connection, one moment. Hello? Hello, yes, is, it, uh, is it better now? Yeah, a lot better. Yeah, okay. So, uh, my friends, as we were talking, uh, uh, what is controlling the market all the time is uh, supply and demand. We gave an example of the petrol oil and, or, or the oil. Uh, accordingly, the tanker rate will go up and down. A tanker is belonging to tramp and not to 
uh, fixed uh, liner uh, prices. Uh, if you take, for example, this uh, shipment or this kind of cargo uh, movement, uh, if you move uh, uh, pallets of uh, timber or your uh, wooden wooden uh, uh, wooden uh, sticks, or we call it um, timber, uh, this belongs to the tramp shipping, of course. See, mm -hmm. this is not the liner. see here uh, they are talking about the difference between tramp and shipping again uh, the uh, ships uh, in the tramp is calling uh, as per cargo um, presence and volumes uh, in the liner they are fixed sailing uh, the contractual form here we depend on the uh, in the liner we depend on the bill of lading uh, and sometimes there is in the liner something called the shipping conference, uh, which is uh, um, a union of uh, some shipping lines. They make an alliance together to uh, fix uh, the, rise, the rate, to fix the price. Uh, this is not the case in the tramp shipping. Um, for example, you know, uh, you know, uh, Mercic line, of course. Yeah. Yes, yes. Ah, and you know MSC line? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So these two, mm -hmm. these two lines together, they have formed an alliance called the 2M. 2M. Merzik and the MSC. You mm -hmm. see? So this one is like a conference, you know? This is, is like an alliance together. They are uh, doing a common service together. Uh, MSC yeah, and, and most, of, most of the nowadays, doctor, most of the liners have been merged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are now three very big alliances. Uh, one uh, of Mercy and uh, MSC, and also um, uh, the other um, alliance uh, is the CMA. Uh, which uh, merged with APL, as you, as you mentioned, the mergers. Uh, APL now uh, is uh, sold or merged inside the CMA, CMA CGM. Uh, also, uh, there is a huge line. Where I'm not sure if you can remember this line, uh, the one which uh, called uh, United Arab Shipping. Yes, yes. Yeah. UAS. UAS. Now, United Arab Shipping was uh, merged into uh this uh, german line hapagloid hapagloid oh. yeah hapagloid has purchased united arab shipping and they mer merged it together as a huge line you know? so this is going in the line of shipping but it is not in the tram um, hmm. so this is the difference and also uh, uh, this is some kind of revision we have seen before we have seen before the types of ships but um, I will go through it uh, quickly. Uh, you remember the container ships, of course, uh, which carry now you have 20,000 uh, containers and more than 20,000 container. Um, they are moving in regular uh, lines, service, and now alliances. Um, next session, I will try to bring you uh, a map of the alliances. Uh, it will be good to understand uh, the alliances and how they are working together. And uh, because you know what happened uh, the, um, before the Corona and uh, after uh, the Corona also, uh, some problems happened. Uh, no ships are available, so it was easy to work uh, in alliances and in groups, not uh, working separately. Uh, this is the general cargo ship which can carry general cargo. Um, they call it twin deckers. It can put cargo inside uh, under deck or cargo on the deck. Uh, bulk carrier, this one you remember we call it uh, uh, bulk uh, carriers. Um, huge ships which carry you know grains and uh, uh, all other uh, kinds of uh, dry bulk. What is the wet bulk? Liquid. 
yeah with bulk is the, the tank the tankers which carry oil uh, carry chemicals uh, or carry uh, uh, any any kind of uh, liquids and also we have the gas carriers you remember this one lng and lpg uh, again uh, the roro uh, which can carry cars or uh, trucks uh, heavy lifts, this one we were talking about, uh, heavy lifts, uh, crews and passengers, uh, reefer ships which carry uh, refrigerated uh, cargo inside, uh, barges. Uh, I'm going quickly because we have uh, explained this before. So if you have any question, you can ask. Uh, is it clear for you all these no. issues yeah, yeah clear for you okay dear okay now uh, this is one uh, um, important uh, part which we haven't uh, explained before uh, how can you describe a ship how can you say this ship is big or small uh, this one we call the uh, ship size and tonnage i want to i am telling you this is a small ship or this is a big ship how would you know that the ship is big enough or it's a small ship? What is the characteristic of a ship? What uh, are the, yeah. the, con the quantity, Mr. Doctor? Capacity, yes, capacity. The capacity. Yeah, capacity is one of the measures, uh, but also uh, some uh, measurements are there. For example, like the uh, sorry, sorry, my dear, can you repeat again? Uh, measurements are called as uh, TEA or something, Doctor? TEU, TEU, this is the number of units. This is the number of containers. Ah, number of units. Ah. Yeah, number of units. But here, you see, uh, for example, uh, take this one, LOA, lens over all. Lens over all. Mm. I am telling you now, this ship is 200 meters. Lens, this one is 300. This one, for example, the, the biggest one, which one uh, on the top is... 400 LOA, lens overall, lens overall. Uh, that's mean um, you have to prepare uh, a very big uh, key and a very big terminal empty to receive this ship. You see, uh, one of the measurements or criteria is the lens overall. Let's take other criteria, which is very important, you know. Uh, whenever I am talking to you about one ship, of course, Suppose that you are an agent and I am an owner. I am telling you, I will send you one ship. Immediately, you need to have, uh, immediately, you need to have five uh, characteristics, which uh, is like, uh, um, it's like the birth certificate. It's like the birth certificates of the, of any ship, you see. Uh, whenever I'm talking to you about uh, a ship, you will ask me, what is the name of the ship, you know? You will ask me, what is the name? Every ship has a name, okay? And every ship has a flag, you know, we have a flag. And each ship has a dimension, measurements, and each ship has a length, and every ship has a draft. We will explain all that. We will explain all that, don't worry. Uh, don't worry, but this is the, some interesting information about uh, vessels and ships. Uh, first of all, uh, every ship has a name. They call it, for example, Karina. This is a ship called Karina. If I'm telling you M slash V, like this, M slash V, what is the meaning of that? Motor vessel, you see? They will tell you this ship called MV Karina, Voyage 5. So, the vessel has a name and voyage. It's like, you know, like flights. Like when you go in a flight, uh, of course, there is a flight number, correct? Yes, correct, Doctor. The same here applies in shipping, you know. For each ship, uh, there is a voyage number and there is a name, MV is a motor vessel, MT, motor tanker. So, from the name of the ship, you can know uh, the type of the ship. If I'm telling you MT Karina is coming to 
the main port, you will know that MV is a tanker. MV is a normal vessel, motor vessel, and like that, you see? M so this is the name MV Carina, for example, this is the voyage. So now this is the first information. You have ship name and you have ship flag. What is flag? Um, when you buy a new car, you go to the traffic department and uh, make the registration, correct? So, correct? Yes, doctor. Yes, so, doctor, correct. Yeah, the same is here. When you build a new ship, you make a registration and you uh, obtain uh, certificates of the ship uh, when it, is, it was built, uh, characteristic of this ship, everything. Uh, you do this in a kind of registration. This is an official registration. For example, uh, I have built a ship in uh, Japan, but I don't want to, to make registration in Japan because uh, registration in Japan is very expensive. So, for example, I go to Hong Kong and register my ship and get all, uh, you can, it is not necessary that you register in the same uh, country which you build the ship. No problem. No problem. If you manufacture the ship in one country and go to another country and make the registration, they have no problem. The most important thing is you bring the people to survey the ship, insurance, and get everything um, formal. Uh, papers and then you will have the flag of the country you registered the ship in it. Is it clear? Yes, doctor. Yeah, like the identity of the ship or something like that. Yeah, identity and they will give you a flag. For example, now you registered your, your ship in Hong Kong. You will raise the Hong Kong flag or China flag. Mm. Uh, so whenever I, I am receiving uh, a ship with a China flag, I know that it is registered in China. Uh, what is the, the a good advantage which uh, we can uh, make, for example, if uh, I am a Saudi uh, owner and I have built a ship and, um, and then I registered the ship in Saudi Arabia. The vessel is carrying the Saudi Arabia flag. When she will come to uh, Saudi and ports, she will get discount and uh, um, some uh, advantages other than foreign uh, flags uh, ships this is the same in egypt if i am a ship owner in egypt and i have a boat a vessel a ship and i register this and make it carry the egyptian flag whenever uh, it goes to an egyptian port you will get for example 50 percent discount on all the port charges. So is this point clear for you? Yes, doctor. And also, yes, doctor. yeah, so uh, flag is very important because it is like identity of the ship. So now you have the name and the flag. Whenever you have any ship, you have a name and the flag. The third uh, characteristic is the weight, the weight of the ship. There is weight and volume. We have something called GRT and the NRT. GRT is the gross, they call it gross tonnage. Uh, NRT is net tonnage. Okay. Uh, what is the difference between uh, GRT and NRT? It's like that, you see. Uh, can you see the one in pink here? This one. Yes, sir. This is the, called the gross tonnage. This means um, uh, all the volume of the ship, the total volume of the ship, you see, the total volume, including the, the base and the holds of the goods, plus the volume of the other places of the ship. The gross tonnage uh, is a volume, you know, it is not a weight, it's a volume. It is the total volume, uh, so gross is, uh, you see, this one plus this one. The gross tonnage is the whole volume of the ship. Holds plus, uh, what is uh, in these areas? Here you have the goods, correct? The cargo. What is yeah. here? What is uh, yeah. placed here? What is placed here? Uh, 
I think the engine and the room for the captain. Engines, yeah, the bridge, the accommodation, the accommodation of the crew. Of the crew members. Yeah, everything. So the total volume, they call it gross tonnage. The net volume uh, is the uh, net tonnage is the net volume of the cargo itself only. Yes, the capacity of the ship uh, to hold the cargo. No, it is not a uh, capacity in volume. It not it is not weight. Yeah, in volume, volume. In yeah. volume, in volume. But uh, GRT and NRT are, and are, are not very well important uh, when you deal with uh, shipping and tramp and uh, ships because there is something called dead weight. Dead weight. Dead weight is uh, the capacity, the total capacity of cargo. This is very important for us. When we deal with uh, shipping and booking uh, vessels, we deal, you know, of course, with uh, tonnage, with weight, uh, not with volume, you know. We deal normally with uh, uh, with weight. I'm telling you, I have a ship which can carry, for example, 30,000 tons. So I am dealing with dead weight. So all the time, we will be using the dead weight. But GRT and NRT sometimes we use for ship, uh, uh, ship uh, we, they call it ship charges or ship uh, dues, port dues. They call it port dues. So uh, all your uh, work will be usually with the dead weight, which is the maximum amount uh, you can carry in cargo, you see, in tonnage, uh, in tons, in weight, not in volume. Normally, you will, you will be using the dead weight, WD, DWT. Uh, dead weight, uh, they call it displacement, or they call it the total weight. Uh, this will give you an idea of how is the big uh, the volume the big uh, size of this ship. Is it uh, if I tell you 50,000 dead weight? This means a very big ship. The beam is uh, something uh, which uh, measure the width of the ship. You know the width from the widest point. Can you get this one? It's the width of the ship from the widest point, not from the, uh, the start of the ship or the end from the middle the widest point of the ship uh, we call it the beam this on uh, this some characteristics of the ship there is something also called draft i'm not sure if you heard about the draft shipping draft draft is the uh, permissible port the, the part which is under the water like this see this is the draft uh, is it clear for you Yes, doctor. Why it is important? Because, uh, for example, if you take the man port, the man port will allow only 11 points 